All right. Kimbo, Kimbo, Nathan Zambi, Yamazulu. All praises. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Tatan Zambi, Yamazulu, Hallelujah, Kifumu Kiapu Kisa, Hallelujah, Glory, Glory, Tata, we honor you, we honor you, Tata, we give you praise, Anna and Kimbo, we say Matondo Masaka for another day, another Samba, a day we come together as feet to to honor you, to give you glory, to uh, expound on your word. And we ask that you will visit us, that you would uh, impart into us, Tata, to give us complete understanding. Oh, Tata, hallelujah. I, I admit, Tata, the church has uh, messed us up, Tata. It has uh, taught us incorrectly, Tata. But we humble ourselves before you and we bow down before you and we ask that you will continue to reveal the truth of your word to us, that you will open it up to us, Tata, giving us understanding and clarity in your word that we can walk therein, that we will not disappoint you, Tata, but we will be the ambassadors that you have called us to be, that we will walk up right before you, just like you told Abana to walk up right before you, Tata. We want to honor you as you have told us to, Tata. You are the Yah of Abana, Yaseka, and Yakuba. You are the creator of all things, Tata. You are Yah all by yourself. You don't need anyone else, Tata. But we humble ourselves and we honor you and we say thank you for choosing us as your nation to be your people, calling us your children, your firstborn, Tata. We say Matondo Masaka. And Tata, we ask, hallelujah, be in this place. Be here with us. Meet us where we are. Be in each and every home, Tata, everyone that is here. Be in their hearts and open it up. Those who will watch this video later, Tata, be there with them, showing them, please, Tata, what your word is saying. We don't know it all. We don't know everything, but you do impart in us, Tata, those things that you want us to know. Reveal it to us, Tata, that we can please you. Matondo, Masaka, Ingeta, and Ingeta. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, everyone. Again, Siami family, Siami feed to the Tuabu Saubuna. Hallelujah. Into this. And uh, can you all still hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you fine. All right, awesome. I'm going to start off. Did you start the video? Yes. It's right here. Okay. I'm going to um, start this off with a scripture. John 4th chapter, verse 24, and this is the King James Version. And a scripture reads, Yah, Tatan Zambi, is a spirit. Did you take the camera off? No, I didn't. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, Tatan Zambi is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. I read that scripture because I had stated earlier that in prayer that um the church has um, misled us. Um, okay. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Okay. 
All right. That um, what I read, the scripture I read uh, was from John, the fourth chapter. And um, it was verse 24. Yes, that was John, the fourth chapter, verse 24. Did you all hear me when I read the, uh, the scripture? Do you want to reread it? No. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's, it's Zoom. Zoom is, is acting up. So um, let's try this again. John fourth chapter, verse 24. This is the King James Version. Yah, Tatan Zambi, is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Um, the reason that um, the Father has given me that scripture to read is because of what we're about to talk about. Uh, again, we discussed this last uh, Samba, and uh, there was a lot of people that was receptive of what was said. But um, I want to address a question that um, that was put on the uh, on the the site, and. Um, I had invited the uh, the brother to, to come on, but I don't think he went back to see that I uh, invited him. The question he put in is, if the Messiah is not of the God family, how then would the writers of the book of John represent the Messiah as the word and as God? Um, now, the one thing that I want to make clear is we did not say that Isaiah was not of the God family. We didn't say that. What we said was there is no Trinity. Okay, that's what we said. And as far as a Trinity is concerned, the Trinity um, is, um, it, it, it comes from, um, I think it's Greek, uh, Roman, you know, uh, and if you look at the different religions, there's a lot of um, religions that have a Trinity. And Christianity just happened to be one of those religions that has a Trinity. We, um, discussed last Samba that we're not to pray in the name of Jesus as the church has taught us. And we taught what it meant. And exactly, we, we explained and it, uh, went into what that means about uh, praying in the name, what it meant. And it was not like the church taught us. You know, the church, we, we were learned, we were taught that when you start off, uh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. That's not what the scripture teaches. And then when we end the prayer, we end it with, in Jesus' name, amen. That's not what the scripture teaches. When you look at what Josiah said, even after his death, look at the uh, disciples. When they gave the word, when they prayed, they never used in Jesus' name. We come to before you in Jesus' name. They never said that. And Josiah himself said, when you pray, pray in this manner, our Father, which art in heaven. And he gave it the, the model prayer. And when he ended it, he never said, in my name. And okay. so we said that the Trinity came from Greek philosophy. Actually, it came from Socrates. And I hope some of you all went and um, researched that um, to see for yourselves that we have to understand that the Romans took over that particular area of our people. They took our culture and they made a religion out of it. And they had inserted some things in there based upon their belief systems. And one of those things was the concept of Trini the Trinity. And it comes from uh, Greek philosophy. So I encourage you all to go back and just research that 
uh, about Greek philosophy and the Trinity and Socrates as well that come from philosophical thinking. It is, it's not scriptural. It's not saying that there is not the, the set apart spirit. We know there is a set apart spirit, which is the most high spirit. But as far as the concept of the Trinity, that's not biblical. That is from Greek philosophers. And we must understand that they have a lot of influence on biblical, a lot of things, especially in the New Testament. And it takes um, the spirit revealing these things to us so that we can be taught the truth because the scripture says, and you should know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Mm -hmm. So the truth has always been out there. It's just a matter of us knowing that truth and allowing us to be set free from uh, a lot of the misteachings and uh, misinterpretations and translations and transliterations of scripture that has been taught to us uh, throughout the years. All right. So you, you might want to uh, add something on the, on the name aspect. Sure. Yeah. yeah. On the name. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. This this was actually a revelation I got this morning. So it's it's, it's very interesting. You guys are starting with this um, because you know we we. Okay. So it goes for me. What revelation I received? It goes back to Shem, right? When Shem was born, uh, let me see if I can just pull pull the uh, the verse here. Uh, let me see. Okay. In, in Genesis chapter four, it says uh, in verse 25, uh, it says, and, at, and Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is, this is not the one I'm looking for. This is not the one I'm looking for. Um, but anyways, you know, we know, we know the name, the word Shem in Hebrew, right? It means name. But we know in, in Kikongo, the, the, the word, when I looked up the word uh, Shem, it means it's semi, semi. And when I asked Yaya Brenda recently, I said, you know, what, what is the word for seed? She said it was semi, right? And so what does Isaiah say about the word? He says that uh, he, he has a parable and he talks about sowing a seed, right? Sowing the yes. seed he says that yes. the word is the seed which was sown. <laughs> so the word and this the word and seed are are almost synonymous with each other spiritually. So when we talk about praying in the name, right, or praying in the in the name of, of, of Most High, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about being in a line with his word. Yes. We're talking about being in a line with, with his word. Remember, there, there's a scripture that says, um, uh, it talks about, uh, so, so let me put it like this. So being in his name, right? It said, okay, this is the one I was thinking about. He talks about how Isolele would bear his name amongst the nations, right? How we would mm -hmm. bear his name amongst the nations right? Yeah. So if the word for name is really seed, right? If, if the word for name is, is semi, but semi also means seed, and we know that the word is the seed, so he's saying we would bear his seed amongst the nations, mm -hmm. not necessarily his name. Exa exa exactly. I'm sorry. Yeah, his word. We would bear his word amongst the nations. Yes. And so not, not just his name, but it's more so his, his word, right? Which is his seed that we're, we're to bear amongst the nations. Mm -hmm. now bearing his seed or carrying his seed amongst the nations we know that for all those that are are um under the most high right as we carry him what does it say he says that we will um we will be we will be covered by the shadow of his wings mm -hmm. right so he also promised us that all those who bear um who walk in his ways that we will be protected you know he he there's a level of protection so yeah. when we're carrying his seed right when we're bearing his seed we're carrying it and that is the covering that is the covering he's giving to us right? mm -hmm. that, is, that is the covering he is our covering his word is our covering that is that is literally what covers us and that's what it means to be under the shadow of his wings because 
what is um there, now okay now this is the verse that i was i was i was trying to connect with this all right where it says um um oh okay it says i put uh the most high it's when uh king david says he says i put uh the most high puts his word above all his name right mm -hmm. puts his word above all his seed right Mm -hmm. so that's really what it's saying instead of he puts his word above all his name it's saying he puts his word above all his seed and that is how we are under the shadow of his wings because his word is what covers us yes his word is what covers his seed and so that is kind of um i know it was it i, I try to i usually try to put this together last smoother but it's like a fresh revelation <laughs> so um but this is like what it means to carry his name it's not it's not really carrying the name more so it's carrying his seed It's carrying his word and as we do that he protects us with his word you know he covers us as he puts his word above all of his seed yes. so his word we are his seed as well mm -hmm. right we are his seed as well so we are covered by his word and so when we come in the name of the most high it's coming within his word so that name is not the focus it's coming within the character. It's bearing his his word. It's bearing, being a part of his seed. His word mm -hmm. being it's bearing his seed. So, bearing his word. So I just wanted to add that because I, I think, you know, that will that will help. Hopefully, if I said it uh, decent enough, it'll help bring some clarity, you know, to um, what is the most important thing. Right. Yeah. And and we appreciate that. I just wanted to add to uh, what he was saying about Simi means to create. That's why the Most High is also referred to as insimi, insimi, simi, semen, mm -hmm. semen, seed, which means to create. Yes. So when you look at that perspective and you go to Genesis, when he spoke what his word and he created and there was. So that's essentially is what you're saying is that his word is the seed. His word is the creator of all. Yes. So that's why he was, he was saying that just to give a little light on that. Um, to others to see that just to tie that in with the genesis when he spoke there was create yes see send me so um did you mute yourself again Who? oh yeah sorry yeah right. no, that was good that was really good. your mouth moving <laughs> yeah um so, so the, the, the main thing is we have to uh, break this down and get some clarity on uh, Yesiah, who Yesiah was, and about the Holy Ghost, as the church say. And uh, we say Muanda and Simi, okay? Um, as I stated earlier, and I, I'm going right in, this is, this is meat that we're getting ready to talk about here. As I stated earlier, the church has um, has messed us up, you know, had us thinking in terms of a trinity. And um, when we look at uh, Yesiah and when we read uh, uh, the things that he, he said in scripture, we automatically connect him to um, as being a God, the son of God who came from heaven and um, you know, uh, dwelt among us. Now, please understand first, I am not taking anything away from Yesiah, okay? I want that to be understood. I am not taking anything away from what we read in scripture about Yesiah. The thing is, we have to understand who Yesiah was. Now the scripture that this brother uh, had mentioned, again, talking about John, the first chapter. And um, I saw that he had responded uh, two other times, a total of three. And every time he responded, he gave a list of verses. And uh, normally when I see something like that, you know, uh, it tells me that this person is knowledgeable with scripture, but they don't understand what they're truly saying as far as the scripture. And uh, I'm not demeaning the brother at all. So, um, you know, if he listens to this, this video, please understand 
I am not belittling you at all, okay? Uh, number one thing I don't do is debate. I'm not gonna go back and forth and argue a, a scripture over you. I'm not. That's beneath me. It's not about that. It's about us coming together as one in the Muanda and the Semi and understanding what we are supposed to do, how we're supposed to live according to the most high. It's not about debating the scriptures. So I wanna make that clear. All right, you had a... Uh, I want to correct them. I said uh, Socrates, it was it was Plato, and I actually want to read something to them um, real quick, but I encourage them to go and study on their own, of course. It says, to briefly summarize what was pertinent, this is talking about the Trinity. We start with mention of the famous Greek philosopher, Plato, circa 429 through 347 BC. He believed in a divine triad of God, the ideas, and the world spirit, though he nowhere explained or harmonized this tri uh, triad. Later, Greek thinkers refined Plato's concepts into what they refer to as three substances, the supreme God or the one from which came mind or thought and a spirit of soul. In their thinking, all were different divine substances or aspects of the same God. Another way of expressing this was as good, the personification of that good and the agent by which that good is carried out. Again, these were different divine aspects of that same supreme good, distinct and yet unified as one. Such metaphysical thinking was common among the in intelligentsia of the Greek world and carried over into the thinking of the Roman world of the New Testament period and succeeding centuries. As the last of the apostles began to die off, some of this metaphysical thinking began to infiltrate the early church, primarily through those who had already begun to compromise with paganism. So we must understand that it is important Important for us to go back and research the early church and you will see that there is so much paganism that crept into the church and the scripture talked about that it said that would be a great falling away people thinking they're talking about you know now but no it happened <laughs> way before now that they fell away from what was being taught as the uh, apostles of uh, Yesiah start dying off these uh, philosophical thinkers of the Greek and Roman uh, uh um, period started infiltrating um, the belief systems back then and hence we have Christianity and it's a hodgepodge of a lot of things and we have to understand that that is why it's important we keep saying this to pray and fast and also mm -hmm. to research I would not have known this if I wouldn't have been just researching and I knew this from some years ago years ago I came across this and knew that that concept came from uh, these Greek philosophers yeah. And you were saying I had a scripture? Yes, you had a scripture. The, um, about Josiah, you mean that one? Yes, where uh, the Most High was sharing with Masa about the prophet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't bring my Bible. Let me see. Okay. I wrote it down, though. But I want to pull it up. So let me go to it. It's Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18. Mm -hmm. And so I want to start. I have it here written, but I just want to go to it. Mm -hmm. And so I want to what start. Verse is it? I want to start at the 17th verse. Okay. Deuteronomy it's, 18, verse 17. Uh, well, actually, let's start at the 16th so we can understand why he said what he said to get some understanding on that. Uh, starting at the 1816 verse, according to all that thou desires of Yah in Horeb, in the day of the assembly, saying, let me not hear again the voice of Yah, neither let me see this great fire anymore, 
that I die not. So what, what it's talking about here is the people, when they heard the voice of the most high and they were frightened and they didn't want to hear. And they said, you know, let him speak to you. And then you give us what he said. They were afraid of his voice. That's what he's talking about. He said, unless we die, because they knew the greatness of him. Mm -hmm. It says, and then y'all said unto me, and this is talking about Moses. They have well spoken that which they have spoken. They were wise in saying what they said. I will raise them up a prophet. Now, this is what Yesai, I mean, what Moses, what the Most High is saying to Moses. Mm -hmm. I will raise them up a prophet from among their, their brethren, like unto thee, meaning you. So he's saying, I'm going to raise a prophet like you, Moses, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that i shall command him mm. so let me go to the 19 and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words so in other words he's saying what he speak these are my words hence the living word <laughs> hence the living word i hope you all caught that like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto thee all, all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name. There we go again with that, that verbiage there. In my name. Ah, Emeka, are you trying to say something? You're muted. No, 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 I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm just laughing. <laughs> like, oh, man. No, that's good. That's good. I think okay. I know let me let me finish reading and I'm, all, I'm almost done you guys and i will require it of him but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name which i have not commanded him to speak so he's talking about the false prophet that come in that but here is he's talking about Messiah. so he said i'm gonna raise up a prophet like you moses uh, that's gonna come from your brethren and i'm gonna put my words it words in his mouth He's going to speak my words. And those of you that don't, don't heed him, then I will deal with you. So, and not only that, we can go to Acts. Okay, let me, let me pause you for a second. Okay, go back to that scripture that, that said, uh, he he uh, will put the word uh, or commandment. I'll, he'll speak the commandment. 18. Okay. And I will put my words in his mouth. Okay, I will put my words in his mouth. And uh, is that all it said? And he says shall something? speak unto them all that I shall command him. All right. Now, if you look at John, the 12th chapter, verse 49, just to tie in with what she said, here's what the scripture says. For I have not spoken of myself, but the father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I shall say and what I shall speak. So, so when you look at John in the first chapter of John, when it says in the beginning was the word and the word was God. And then you go on jump a little further. And I think in the 14 verses that in the word became flesh. This is what it's talking about here. Mm -hmm. He put his word within, within this prophet. Zombie Zola, you cut out for a second. Can you, can you finish that scripture? Again, I think you cut out on everybody. Oh, okay. Saying. Yeah, it's it's saying that our uh connection is is weak. Um can you all hear me okay? Yeah, it'll let you know. Oh it, yeah. Can you can you, Emeka, is it can you hear us? Emeka. It's showing that it's a weak, it's yellow there. We can hear you. Oh, okay. All right, thank Good. you. Yeah, we can hear you now. All right, thank you. So that scripture again is John the twelfth chapter. Yeah, 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 we can hear you now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. John the twelfth chapter, verse forty nine. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment: what I shall say and what I shall speak. So he sent himself. <laughs> So it's just proving that the commandment that Yesiah was speaking, it came from what Masa said here in, in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. And then they came back and they spoke it in Acts as well. 
in Acts 3 and 22 and Acts 7 and 37. I think a mech is, hit, is it, it's, it's, it's doing yeah. it again. It's a bad connection today. I don't I think it's the weather outside. Yeah. So you were gonna read Acts uh, 3 and 22. They they quoted what was in the, the scripture in Deuteronomy. It says, for Moses truly said unto the fathers, Yah, your Elima will raise up for you a prophet like me for your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things whatsoever he say to you. And then it's also in Acts 7 and 37. This is the same Moses who told the Israelites, or Isolele, God will raise up for you a prophet like me. So he keeps saying he's going to raise up a prophet like me mm. from among your own brethren and so there's a mis uh, uh understanding uh, uh, a concept that has been taught incorrectly throughout the years and in order for us to understand is you first have to go back and and i i urge all of you to to do a research on the, the early church to see how these things crept up in in the church how they deified this prophet mm -hmm. because here it clearly states that he's going to be a prophet like moses so we were taught that he was god so if he's god and the scripture is saying in deuteronomy and then they coming back and quoting deuteronomy and acts and saying the same thing over again he's going to be a prophet just like you moses if just like you, Moses, then <laughs> Moses himself will have to be deified as well because there's a saying essentially he's saying it. because M Moses was a prophet that spoke the words of the Most High, did he not? Because Moses did not want to go. And he said, I will word your mouth. That's yes. what he told Moses. I will word your mouth. That's what he told Yeshua. I will word your mouth. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But because something cr crept up in with the Romans and the Greeks, and they incorporated this in their religion and their, their dogma and their doctrines. It has been taught for hundreds and even thousands of years to us. And it was, it was, it's wrong. I mean, when you look at this passage here and other passages to substantiate that mm -hmm. with Deuteronomy. And 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 because then and when you go to John, it says, and the word became flesh. Why? Because the word was in him. Jeremiah was the same way. The word was in Jeremiah. He said it was burning within him. It had to get out. And he put his, his words in Yesiah. He said, you will speak what I command you to speak. And he said, I don't speak those things of myself. I speak the words the of the uh, who sent me, the father who sent me. Yes. The father who sent me. Abba, Yaabi, Nzambi. God, as some people say, he worded his mouth. He sent his word within him and he spoke what he said. And he said, Who, whosoever <laughs> would not heed to what Josiah said, then will I deal with, he said. I'll deal with you. So when he spoke, when Josiah spoke, he was being a representative, an ambassador, so to speak, uh, uh, for the most high. Because remember, the people said, we don't want to hear you directly. Mm -hmm. I said, let's go to the 16th verse to see why he's saying this. And he said he's going to send a prophet. They were afraid because of the smoke and the fire. They were, they were terribly afraid of what they saw. And he said, they have said what rightly or correctly. And I will raise up a prophet from among your brethren. Yes. Yes. So they had to, they, he, he had to send re, uh, representatives. So when we see these people in the scripture, they're representatives of the Most High. And this includes Yesiah. He was a representative. Now, the, the, the church harps on Yesiah being the son of God. Now, like I said, yeah. I don't take anything away from Yesiah. Okay? <laughs> he is the son of God. But guess what? When you look at Exodus, the fourth chapter, verse 22, and I've been saying this uh, ever so often, and I thank my wife because she was the one that, that pulled this up and, and showed it to me. In the fourth chapter of Exodus, verse 22, it reads, and thou shalt say unto Pharaoh. Now, again, this is the most high talking to Masa. Thus saith in Zombie. The Solele is my son, even my firstborn. 
So guess who a sole is? A solele. <laughs> a solele is the son of the most high. And we know who Isolele is, that that's us. So we are sons of the most high. That's why Yesiah, because he came from us. I will raise up a <laughs> prophet, prophet from amongst you, from uh -huh. among your brethren. He came from us. So if Isolele is a son of the most high, and he came from Isolele, guess what? He's the son of God. If the most high sends you out and he's speaking to you to say, say these words, then you, you are referred to as a son of the most high as well, because you're part of the Sulele. Now, didn't the most high tell my son? Can I, can I add something? Go ahead. Okay, uh, this is from Exodus chapter seven, and, and it's, it's it's really interesting that you know it, it just lines up with everything you're saying. But it's from, and the Infumu said unto Moses or Masa, "See, I have made thee a god to Pharaoh." He's telling this is what he's telling Masa. He says, see, and Aaron, thy brother, shall be thy prophet. <laughs> Verse 2, thou shalt speak all that I command thee. Uh-huh. Come on. And Aaron, thy brother, shall speak unto Pharaoh that he send the children of Isolele out of this land, out of his land. So he literally... Did he say I was gonna make you me? No. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, I'm gonna uh Master, I'm gonna make you me. No. But he did tell him what he said, all that I tell you, that's what you shall speak unto Pharaoh, and I will make you a god unto, unto him. Pharaoh. And that's what he did with the Isaiah. Exactly. Now I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you something funny, man. When when I was getting ready to speak and you asked, may I say something? And I stopped and, and told you to go ahead. I was getting ready to say, and I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. But I was getting ready to say, didn't the Most High tell Masa, I will make you like a God unto Pharaoh? <laughs> and you come right around with that same scripture. <laughs> wow. Okay. The spirit is one. <laughs> so... You know, we have to take what the church has taught us. That's been taught incorrectly. That has, yes, thank you. That has been taught incorrectly. It's not all of it is incorrect. That, <laughs> that's, that's not right. what we're saying. That's right, Charmaine. That's right. Abraham served one. One. And he one said, there's none God. beside ah, me. My none beside me. So, so, so. We have to take what the church taught us about uh, the Trinity. Let me put it that way. And we have to dismantle it because it's not so. It is not so. I, I have said before too, the uh, scripture says, and um, if, if someone can pull that up, uh, the scripture says that um, where Yah said, I, I am Yah all by myself. Is there anything too hard for me? Okay, he said this. So he's basically telling us there's no one else. It's me all by myself. Mm -hmm. So why is it so difficult for us to understand that Yah is by himself? He don't need any help, but we have Yesiah and the Holy Ghost. And we see three. But again, Yah said, I don't need any help. Here it is. Let me read it. Yes, ma'am. Declare what it is to be, present it, <coughs> present it, <coughs> excuse me. Let them take counsel together. Who foretold this long ago? Who declared it from the distant past? Was it not I, Nzandi? 
and there is no Yah apart from me. Mm. A righteous Yah and a savior. So he and he alone is our savior. That's why his name is, uh, uh, Yesiah had that name, Yah is salvation, because he came representing him to bring us back to the one who give us salvation, who is our savior. It says here in his, in his word, a righteous Yah and a savior. There is none but me. We should be worshiping no one but the creator. Mm. And if anybody's teaching you anything else, they're teaching us incorrectly. That goes against scripture. Now, what scripture is that again? That's in um, Isaiah 45, and I started in verse... Let's see what I saw. The 18th verse. And then the 19th says, I have not spoken in secret from somewhere in the land of darkness. I have not said to uh, Yacouba's descendant, seek me in vain. I, Yah, speak the truth. I declare what is right. Mm -hmm. So now, when we look at Yesiah, when we look at Yesiah, and who Yesiah was is uh, Isaiah. Four, someone put in Isaiah forty-five and five. Tiana, was she asking um, a question where it was? I or think what? she she might be pointing to that scripture as well. But when we look at when we I'm sorry when we look at Yesiah and who he was, Yesiah was a prophet who was also the son of the most high. Moses was a prophet who was also a son of the most high. Okay, so there's no trinity is what I'm trying to say. There's no trinity. And the, the brother again, you know, the question to address that question, he said, if the Messiah is not of the God family. And again, I never, we never said he was not of the God family. What we're saying is there's no Trinity. We acknowledge Yesiah for what he did, who he is. We acknowledge that. You know, uh, there was a discussion that um, um, the se seven spirits of the most high and the discussion that I had with these brothers is we believe that Yesiah was the only one who possessed these seven spirits of the Most High. But the other prophets, each one had their, uh, their, their, their duty in uh, which they were called. So there's different spirits that was given to everyone. And we see how they operated in their calling. The Most High has given me a particular uh, area, a spirit in which I am to work. Most High has given my wife a, a spirit in which she's to work, as well as everyone else that is, is listening. You each have a, a, the spirit of the Most High and your gifts is something that the Most High is using through you for his glory. Yesiah just happened to have more than what we had. And it was because he, he was chosen, he was called for that specific purpose. So when, when we look at the scripture that says here in John, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, mm -hmm. okay? When you go back to Genesis, and, and I said this before, when the Most High spoke his word from his mouth, everything became into existence. So now when we, we see on down through John and how John was talking about the light, you know, and the light was going to come, a solele, which was what I was going to talk about last Samba in the script, you know, we, we end up going to something different. A solele is the light of the world. Mm. 
-hmm. How is a solele the light of the world? Because a solele was chosen by the most high, uh, like our brother and former Mecca said earlier, we were given the word. We're the seed and semi. We're the seed of the most high, the seed of Abana. Uh, Yaseka and Yakuba. We're the seed that was chosen by the Most High. So it is up to a solele to go forth throughout the world and to distribute the word of the Most High. He said that we are the light of the world. So when Yesiah came and John saw him, John said, this is the light in which I was speaking of. In other words, the word. He is, is, is the word. He, embody, he embodies the word of the most high. And Josiah himself said, I don't speak things of my own, but the commandment of the father, that which he gives me. So these things that we share, that we teach to you, it is not our word. It's the commandment of the Most High Yah that we share. Yesiah was is the brother of a solele. We're, we're all related. Now, some of you may go, oh, no, I, I, I can't buy that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you can't buy it. It's just not for you. Just No, what we say you know, is, is pray. Because it is the most high that give revelation. Yes. And we know Forgive that me. Pray. You, you can pray. And fast and pray. You cannot com confine the creator to a book. You can't say this is all there is to him in a book. There's no way that you can do that. <laughs> Anyone that thinks that, I just don't know what to say about that individual when it comes to the most high. Uh, and I also want to say, we know that, I want to go to that word prophet. Yes. I want us to look at that word prophet. I did a just a brief little review over it, and it comes from the uh, the the uh, the Ibaru, Hibaru word uh, Nabi. So when you hear us calling, like you hear us say Nabi Jonathan, that's prophet Hebrew for prophet. That is a Kikongo word Nabi. And um, and looking at it, it's, it it comes from Naba a Nab. Now I want us to look at these letters individually because you have the n the b and the a so you have the moon n c b bet house a aleph strong man the head which is the most high so it's saying this is this is the most the seed the house of the seed of the most high which is isolele so the prophet has to come from isolele nobody else that's what it's saying. And I'm going to show you this here. I have a young lady that I converse with. I love dialoguing with her. She he is teaching me so much. She is from, she's Bantu and she's from the uh, Agabusi tribe. Agabusi? Yeah, Agabusi tribe. And over there in Kenya. And she was teaching me more about the name Abba, which has the same letters as Nabi. You have the A and the B, but it also has the N for, uh, for, for Nabi. So uh, Ba, she said, they did not want to teach the, the fullness of what that word means because it will um, expose who the people really are. She said, it's not just Abba Father. She said, but you have the A, which is the head, the strong man, which is the creator of all. Then you have the Ba which is us. I'm going to go to it and, br and bring it up, what she said. And she said, you always have the ba, which is us, bond two. That's why you got a bond two. It's always connected. It's always attached to the father. And they did not want to bring that part out. So when they said Abba, Abba father, they're talking about us as well. That's attached to the most high. So I want to uh, bring up what she's saying, because she, she, I mean, she just opened my eyes to a lot. Of, it, it, when you understand and you know the uh, original language, they can't fool you. They trying to keep it away, but more is being revealed. And that was very profound when she showed me that the ah uh, and the ba and the in two, 
<laughs> which is what we talk about the three I told them. And so again, let me go to it real quick, you guys. I gotta pull it up. Okay. And uh, she's gonna she's gonna come and do a teaching on uh, the language and our culture uh, with us. So um, I'm working with her, and uh, she's gonna come on and share this knowledge that she has. And I, I, I be asking her questions. When, when she don't know something, she's I'm gonna go to the elders. She go to the elders and she'll ask the elders, what does this mean? What are they saying? So, all right, here she is. Now I'm gonna have to move up and find that particular, she, she, be, she, she be sending me so much and I'm so appreciative of her sending me these. Uh, here it is. She said, actually, Abba also means these. That's one. It's another one, too. For people only. You can never use Abba, these, for animals, even though they are living things. Abba refers to more than one person, plural. Example, Abba na, Aban tu. I just told you all that, Aban tu. So when they say Abba, they're talking about us, too, because we're attached to them. He said that we're written in the palm of his hand and no one can remove us from him. We are attached to him. These are my people. And she said, an, A-N-E, is to mean my, mine. So it's solele, he said, is mine. Abba is two parties, the most high with us. She said, agape love, but that's not the one that I wanted to uh, show you all, but that, that was a good one too that I wanted to, to share. Here it is. The Europeans always say Abba Father. Abba is not the name of the Most High by itself. It's him and his people combined. And who is his people? It's Solele. He puts us on his bosom. A, the Most High, Ali, the head. The Most High and Ba, his people. The Europeans didn't want to disclose this because if they said what Abba means, then we would know who the people are. Ba, Baba. Baba is uh, also used for father, just like Tata is father. Baba can mean father, but Ba comes after the A. Y'all following me? So you got A, Ba. And the ba comes after the A in the alphabet. Our earthly fathers come second. So that's why you have Baba, because that's your earthly father. We never call our earthly, earthly fathers Abba, because that A is powerful and for him alone. So we're attached to the Most High. We belong to him. We are his. You mind if I add just a, a little bit? I don't know if you're done yet, but you mind if I add to? Go okay. ahead. Uh -huh. Okay. You know, the when you look at the the uh, paleo picto, right? We uh -huh. see the the olive, right? Which they, you know, the olive it represents the the, the ox. Yes. Which represents a, a strong worker. You know, and and to what you were bringing out um as his seed you know which which the last point you just brought out about how our earthly fathers come second you know there was something yesiah was asked by a multitude of people after he had uh walked um on the on the sea and and, and went to the other shore on the other side he he was asked um you know the the people asked him you know, because they, they came to the other side and he said, you didn't come for um, the miracles. He said, you just came for the bread. And some actually were kind of like, whoa, like this, <laughs> you know, some some actually did come to to learn from him. And they asked him, they said, how do we teach us how to do the works of our father? You know, how do we do the works of our father? You know, of the Father, how do we do the works of the Most High? 
you know? And so I found that very interesting when you, I know it's, I think it's like in, um, I know it's in Matthew somewhere, um, might be like 18 or 19, I'm not sure, but you know, it just, when I think about going back to like the paleo picto, just the symbology and the, the meanings behind the picture graphs and then the connect, connecting them to what is said in scripture, you know, it shows you like this, the house was established to do the works of the father. Yes. You know, that's exactly what we were established to do. In fact, you know, um, Yesiah even says like, um, since, you know, he says, he says, do not believe me, but believe the works that I do for the works that I do come from the father. You know, he says, uh, you know, he talks about him always doing the works of the father. And so that's what we Isola they were established to do. You know, we were, we are established. We were created to do the works of the father in the earth. And so I just wanted to bring that out because I, I really enjoyed what you were saying there. And I thought, um, you know, this you know, was, Char Charmaine, um, 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 I'm not clear on what you're asking, dear. I mean, Charmaine, I'm sorry. And and uh, just to respond on the first part of your uh, question, uh, Charmaine, that Matondo, uh, and Mecca Matondo. I don't want to sound like we're disregarding what you you said. Um, the first part of your question, Charmaine, if Yesaya is God. Oh, I see what she's saying now because they say, uh, he said nobody knows the hour, not not even me, exactly. except except how only the father. They, yes, how come they don't know? That exactly. This is the whole thing we were saying. Got he's, it. Yeah. He's he's not God. This is what, what we're saying. You know, um, when we look at this the scripture in Genesis, uh, first chapter, verses 26 and 27. You know, uh, the scripture reads, uh, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And then when you look at verse 27, it tells us, and in his image created man, created he, him. It went from plural to being singular. So, we're taught in church that when he said, let us make man in our image, he was talking to Jesus and the Holy Ghost. No. <laughs> he's, if I may say, he's God alone. Veronica. What chapter? Okay. I want to make sure. No, that, we... that, that was earlier. Okay. She and I, I told her the chapter. It was okay. what I read in John, the okay. fourth chapter, okay. verse 24. But he's... He's all by himself. He don't need help. He don't need any help. Okay. So when uh, um, when he's, he did not say, let us make man, we also have to look at that too. Read to um, him what that young man said. I think he's from, he's from, uh, he's Zulu. He's from South Africa. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. But while you're looking at it, he, he brought some clarity on that too. So the, the key is the language. Right. Greek is not the language. English is not the language. English is not the culture. Greek is not the culture. So to have a clear understanding on what what scripture is saying, you have to have it in its right context in its correct language and culture. And we're learning that they have integrated things within there. It's just not in there. It's not right. And we've been taught these things and it is, um, it's hard for a lot of people to believe these things because it's shaking your foundation. It's, sh it's shaking some of that foundation. But why would the, the scripture say is that, uh, go back to the old landmark. So just think about that for a moment. What is the old landmark, the old way? And I want to talk on you, you mentioned works. And I did just a brief study up on works again this morning. I did it before, but just kind of brushed up on it. And I want to go and show you all something about what he said. Actually, that word works, when you look at it in the scripture, is italicized. And we know that when a word is italicized, it has been interjected into the word. Whenever you can look that up in the front of your Bible, it tells you that those things are in there for a reason at the beginning. It tells you things. So it was interjected. But still, 
that's okay. We're going to look at it and see what works is and go back and show you who your sire was. Okay, I, I found it. Go ahead. Okay, all right. So um, this is from uh, uh, the video that I did with uh, Nabi Mikhail Yah. It was a guy that responded uh, in that video. His name is Muzi Mabazila. And here's what he said. Yes, and this is going back to the scripture I, I was reading, Genesis first chapter, verse 26. He said, yes, the Most High was referring to himself alone when he said, let us make man. He was not referring to himself, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. This form of speech is considered as royal plural or plural of respect. Same thing occurs in Zulu language. Now we have to understand the language. Which is Bantu. Uh, okay. Is Bantu language. Yes. He says, same thing occurs in Zulu language. When I greet a person, I say, Saubona. Saubona. The word is in plural because the singular form of it would be Ngakubona. And we never use the singular form when we greet both one person or a number of persons. So the royal plural or plural of respect occurs in Zulu language naturally. I don't know whether it occurs in any other Bantu I'm languages. I'm quite sure it does because there's a it, lot of similarities in a lot of them. It does. Uh, in, in Kikongo, they'll say when you're, when you're uh, saying thank you to an elder or senior or many in the room, you'll say tutondele. When you're referring to elders in, uh, in um, to be respective and to honor, right? Mm -hmm. Similarly, say tutondele. Tutondele means we thank you. You say you can say it to one elder if you're mm -hmm. if you're um, speaking. Yeah, when you're speaking to an elder, you say to Tondele, we thank you. And it's not plural, we as in me and the people I'm with. I'm saying it when I'm by myself. Yes. And I say it to an elder. So it's it's it's, it's yes. It's consistent it's, the same and the, cause they're all one language. I want to read yeah. this here real quick and then I'm gonna go into uh the uh the, the word works and pull it back into Hebrew because we have to go back to the original or Hebrew. Hebrew. She even talked brought that up. Mm -hmm. It's it's Hebrew or Kibiru Ur is in there. <laughs> <laughs> Abraham from the land of what? Ur. <laughs> Ur. <laughs> Hebrew, <laughs> Ur. Ur. You. Man, it's all in the language. It's all in the language. Once yes. we understand the Bantu language, things is just so much clear. But she says the A, just like um, America was saying, a pictograph of a bull. Now, the uh, the other people that say they are the people, they say it's a sheep. It's not. It's, mm -hmm. it's a bull. It's, a bull. It's, it's first in the paleo in Aramaic. Because uh, the Swahili has a mixture of Aramaic and the Paleo. I'm not going to get into that, though, but there's a reason behind that. It signifies power and strength of the Most High. He is the beginning. The second boss, she's breaking down a Bantu uh, here. And uh, we did a teaching on that. And then Mecca uh, came back also and did uh, a teaching on that, a spinoff from that. So... Um, I'm sorry. Um, it signifies power and strength of the most high. He is the beginning. The second, which is the ba, signifies the people. Been, been a bot to, been a bet to, been a bet to. Uh, and into, ba into, uh, ba into, into is the spirit, as they say. So when we say am a bantu, it's an attachment of yourself to him. Remember I said, mm -hmm. I said that the ah, ba is attached, always attached to Abba. So the ba, the people is attached to the father. So when they say an Abba, again, that's what she's saying. You're, you're not only talking about the father, but you're talking about his people as well. When you say Abba, father, yes. Abba, father, the people too, Abba, father. And she says, we put him first. That is why no matter what we have gone through, we have the natural love for the most high. And I'm not going to get into other things she said there. Now, real quick about the word works. I'm going to, the Greek in, in there, when you go back to the Greek, because it was written in Greek, Koine Greek, uh, which is like a street language uh, of the Greek, is ergon. 
and it means business, employment, uh, your principal occupation. Okay, well, we know that these people were not Greek. They may have spoken it just like we speak um, English. That's not who we are, but we speak it, right? So we got to go back to their original language to understand what they were conveying here, to get clarity on it. So when you go back and find the Hebrew component to this word ergon, <laughs> let me get it here. I'm going to pull it up. You know, just just to uh, quickly expound on on spirit or the Holy Ghost, uh, and I know she's going to come back to what she's saying. Just to quickly expound on that, we all have His Spirit. Mm -hmm. We all have it, and the Moanda and Simi is to remind us of His Word. Okay, so when Yesaya said, "You know, I must go," you know, so that He can send the Comforter or the Spirit of Truth. The spirit of truth is to bring us into the truth of his word. So, you know, you can have all the knowledge that you want, you know, in the scriptures and yet not have the spirit to give you understanding of what the, the scripture is saying. We got to have the Moana in Simi in order to be able to understand what is being said. So that, that, uh, that spirit is being poured out today is being poured out upon us, which is why those of us who are tr uh, truly seeking the truth through prayer, through fasting, and asking the Father to uh, give us understanding of his word, he's opening it up to us and allowing us to see and understand what his word is saying. That's the spirit that's showing us. That's the Muanda in Semi that's enlightening us. The spirit of truth, which comes from him because it is a part of him. We have to understand the Yah that we serve. That we have to understand. We cannot comprehend everything in full, but at least we can comprehend as much to know what he says will take place. He can speak his word to make his word come into fruition, into reality. It, 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 <laughs> he can take a part of him, you know, and, and send it out. But it's him. It's all him. It's not a trinity. Okay, man. Okay, so the, the word works, and it's coming from uh, and greater works because we discussed that. I know we discussed that last time. So when you go to the to the Greek, it's it's ergon, as I said. And um, these are all my books here. I have the Greek that'll take you to the Hebrew equivalent, and then to another book that take you deeper into if the uh, Hebrew Hebrew a uh, meaning of it. So ergon in Greek for work is. Um, the uh, principal occupation of one's life, a service. Now, this is this is the Greek. So when I go back to the Hebrew, uh, word is um, is um, malaka. Does that sound familiar to y'all? <laughs> Malik malaka and it's business. The principal occupation of one's life, a service. Matthew, you get that? I know you catch on real quick. Melaka. Melaka. One more time. Say it again. One more time. Melaka. 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 Malik. You're muted if you're talking. <laughs> okay. Okay. I. I... <laughs> okay. All right. So I think, it's. I think I'm getting it. Okay, so it's Malacca, Malacca. I was saying Malacca, but it's Malacca, Malacca. In this business, the principal occupation of one is like a service. So when I go back into the Hebrew to find out what is the Hebrew meaning deeper of this in the root word, the root, the root letters is the L and the K, which is, you know, to walk. L and the K to walk. Yes, and yes, Randy. Ha <laughs> ha, she got it. Okay, you got it. Okay, and so when you go back to that word, it's, it's, it's walk, lack, 
like Malik, one who walks for another works. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about work so we can get understanding of that particular passage? Pull that passage up and greater work shall ye do. All right, all right. Ergon. I'm in the Hebrew now because we understand have to understand their concept. So it says one who walks for another. So who did Yesiah say he came? He came and he did and he spoke for none other than the father. So he was one who walked for another, the most high. Oh, Wow. And, huh? Oh wow! I'm just that's 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 powerful. Yeah, but see, that's why I say it's important for you to go back to the the culture and the uh, the words of the people to get the uh, understanding. If you just go into Greek, this book is wasn't written in the Greek. You're gonna totally miss it. Work. What does work mean? You know, they never went into this in church with us. They just read the scripture. And greater works shall ye do. So the works, like I said, it it it's ergon and ergon is uh, melaka melaka which is from the same root word uh, as Maleki, which is a messenger, which is translated as angel in English. So it says, one who walks for another, messenger. M-L-A-K, those same root words in Hebrew that is in there for messenger is the same for business or occupation. So it's one that is doing the work of the most high. Mm. he was doing the work of the most high he was a messenger the ambassador of the most high and that's what it says hebrew and aramaic angel messenger ambassador mm -hmm. like you said he was the an ambassador of the most high that's why he said i, I what i do i don't do with my own exactly i'm, I'm sorry y'all we, we're gonna have to be ending you know uh soon real soon uh, but yeah. I do have that scripture that you were asking. That scripture is John, the 14th chapter, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my father. Now, Brenda brought out uh, last Samba, I believe. The scripture here, when we look at it, now, again, the church teaches Jesus, God, okay, son of God, and some have said, ask this guy's question, you know, uh, yeah, about being God. All right. If Josiah here said, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also and greater, can we do greater than God? Yeah, no, we can't. Okay, we cannot do greater than God. So now we have to look at what does he mean here? What was he saying here when he said, he that believeth on me? It's not saying you believe it on Josiah. What he's saying is believe on the, what, the word that I am I, giving yes, you. Yes, I was because I'm coming head. as an ambassador of the father who sent me. That's what he's saying. And the most I said in, in Deuteronomy 18, he said, if you reject what he, he said, I will raise up a prophet from among your people and him uh, uh, will I send and he and I will, uh, he will speak my words and I'm paraphrasing now, those that don't, uh, <clears throat> don't receive it, he's saying, basically, I will deal with them. So, so he's saying here, if you receive the words that I'm giving you, guess what? You can do the same thing that I'm doing and greater now, than what I've done, greater than what you've seen me do. Now, I was talking about <clears throat> Nabi and I went to Ergon. Let's pull in the, the Greek word Ergon, which translate into uh, Melika, Melika with prophet. Because it says that he was a prophet, Yesiah. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy and Acts talks about Man. this is he that was spoken of you know, that Moses spoke of. That's what Acts is saying about Deuteronomy. So when you look at the word prophet, I told you that it simply is translated as Nabi. And when you look at it in, in, in Strong's, it says that a Nabi is a spokesman, speaker, inspired man. And it comes from the root word Nab, 
Anaba, which means to prophesy under influence of divine spirit. So under the influence of the set apart spirit to speak mm. or sing by inspiration, to show and to declare, to reveal the words mm. of Yah to men. And was he not, the scripture said he was a prophet, so he's saying he was revealing, he was declaring the words. Hence, he became the living word because he was alive and he spoke the word. That's why he said, the live that we say the living word. Yes. He spoke the words of Yah to me. That's what it means. By being moved by a power other than your own. We gotta end it on that note there. Yeah, I, I hate to I hate to have to cut out because this is good. Um and, and I was thinking, you know, if if once we uh, do what we have to do, if we could come back, get back online, you know, no, I we'll would just love continue to, next week. But um, you know, there's so much that we have to understand here. And uh the only way truly that you will grasp this and understand it is to pray, people. We we got to pray. And ask Tata and Zombie to reveal it to us through his Mwanda and Sene. We're not going to understand this naturally. I know, baby, we got to go. Uh, we're not going to understand this naturally. We got to pray because this is a spiritual thing. Okay. We can have all the knowledge that we want. We will not understand it by knowledge only. That's man's interpretation. But we have to understand uh by the spirit this is why i read that scripture in the beginning yah is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth so with that said we're going to go ahead and end it um can i know. give like a quick just like 30 like less than 30 seconds yes sir you know i think the most important thing is it, and it goes back to you know yes praying and also the the teaching that you did where you talked about stripping off of babylon you know, yes. we have to be ready to come out of this mentality of what we've been taught by those that have taken us captive, who are not the people and don't know the ways of the people. Mm -hmm. We are in a Gentile nation, a heathenist nation at that, full of corruption. So this something as powerful as the word of the Most High is going to be corrupted by them. And we need to be ready to strip that completely off and have an open mind to receive new understanding. Yes. The correct understanding. Exactly. Yes, yes, correct. The correct understanding, absolutely. Yes. All right. Hallelujah. Tada Zombie. Hallelujah. Matonda Masaka. Tada, we ask that this word uh, that has been brought forth, that you would uh, uh, allow the people, enlighten them, allow them to see it, Tada, through the spiritual eyes, through, in the spiritual realm. Allow them to understand and to see it, Tada. We uh, are here as ambassadors of yours, and you use us through your word, Tata, that it will touch others and uh, increase them. And we ask you, Tata, to guide us and to speak to us and to direct us. Tata, we zola you greatly. Nuzolele, nuzolele. We love you greatly, Tata. And we ask that you would help us and guide us uh, into, bring us into all truth. Hallelujah. And get the and get them. and y'all were quiet today so i <laughs> i <laughs> hope you all were getting it because you guys were very quiet today <laughs> so all right uh we're gonna have to jump off because we we got a text and um we're gonna have to run matondo everyone matondo matondo all right, and we're definitely going to come back and we're going to get into this even more because, you know, there's some things that just truly need to be understood. All right. So, uh, you all have an Till increase. next time. I'm sorry. Till next time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what time next time? Because I came late. We, we start uh, 1130 Eastern Standard Time. That's our time. Um, okay yeah so uh where are you if you don't mind i'm in that. i'm in new york i'm on the east coast okay all right so um i think you're you're what uh two hours or we, two hours ahead we're your central time 
Eastern. Eastern? Yes. Oh, so I'm, the the same, I'm the same. I'm the same time. Yeah. yeah, I'm the same time. Yes. Yeah, okay. I'm the same time. Awesome. So okay. Eleven thirty a.m. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this.